What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So we're going to take a look and a listen to Representative Porter. She's going to be talking about what's going to happen on Monday. We're all waiting when it comes to the first infrastructure bill, the second infrastructure bill. What's going to happen? We have the debt ceiling issue. We also have funding the government. We have a lot of things that are happening right now. And uh, she's going to focus mainly on that second infrastructure bill, which I think we're all waiting for. So that's what we have in store for the video today. But first off, on this channel, we talk about news that matters. If that sounds like something interesting to you. Please subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell notification. That way you'll get notified anytime we put out a video. And like always, if you see my name and a picture of me in the comment section, make sure you also see a check mark next to my name. That check mark signifies that it's me. If you do not see that check mark, it's not me. It's someone trying to impersonate me. So we're going to go ahead and take a look and a listen to what Representative Porter has to say. Here we go. All right, now let's talk about one voice in your party. What is going to happen on Monday? Because, you know, Jayapal is saying one thing, and, I, and look, people have to know, very often the left wing of the party, the progressives are talked about as a minority, not with Biden and this spending bill. He's with them in terms of the priorities and the price tag. But I had Gottheimer on last night, who's, you know, a, you know but he's a centrist, a moderate, he was saying one thing, like, yeah, we'll do them one at a time and we'll get them both done. Jayapal say, no, 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 no. The reconciliation bill is getting done or we're not doing them both. Now, Jayapal, just so you know, Representative Jayapal, she is the chair. So you have the chair saying and chair of the Progressive Caucus. You have the chair saying this. And now we're, li we're listening to the vice chair. What's the deal? Well, look, I've talked to Representative Gottheimer, to Josh, about this very issue. And what I've said to him is, Josh, we were elected to represent men and women. We were elected to represent all different kinds of industries. We were not elected just to deliver roads and bridges. We were elected to deliver roads and bridges and better health care and more affordable child care and a better future for our planet. So doing these things together is consistent with President Biden's agenda. He understands that you, if you have a road for someone to get to work, it doesn't matter if they can't leave the house in the first place because they don't have care for an elderly relative or for their children. So when we talk about our economy and we talk about building back better, that means building back all of the interconnected aspects of our economy together. And this has been the plan from the get-go. This is exactly what the progressives have been saying months ago. This is what Speaker Pelosi has been saying for months. This is, in fact, what President Biden initially rolled out. All right, so help me with this, uh, because obviously you understand the progressives. You're one of the shaper of that caucus. Um, but you know, for a while it was, it's just Manchin. If they can just figure out Manchin with a little sprinkle of cinema on the Senate side, uh, you guys will be fine. Everybody else on the same page. This is all about the House. And here's what I don't understand. You guys face an existential threat in the opposition party. They will do whatever it takes from little things like McConnell just flip-flopping once again on a key issue, this time the debt ceiling. First time, we'll never let the United States default. Now, we're not going to raise the debt ceiling. That's a little thing for them. They will fight to decertify an election, to overturn an election. And you guys are fighting amongst yourselves? Do you guys get the stakes? Chris, I want to be very clear. What I'm fighting for, what we are fighting for, is the American people. And that means that there are going to be disagreements. I, what I said to Representative Gottheimer, what I would say to these conservative Democrats is, are you not hearing from your constituents about the cost of prescription drugs? Oh, yeah, I'm hearing about that. Are you not hearing from your constituents about the difficulties in paying for child care? Oh, yeah, I'm hearing from my constituents about that. Okay, I'm also hearing from my constituents about roads and bridges. So we clearly need to do all of these things. And I think that is what people need to be focusing on. We are fighting for the American people. We are fighting to deliver what President Biden knows our economy needs. That's the fight we're in. Republicans are simply standing in the way of delivering for the American people. And by the way, if those Republicans would step up and deliver for the American people, then we wouldn't have all of this drama in the first place because know, these bills will be getting but it's 400 not votes in the House. Their position okay, so and th this is a good point. She's, the message here is fighting for the American people, and that's what they should continue to say. Uh, as far as what's going on, the $3.5 trillion bill is too much money, but all, all the stuff that you're hearing, all that the noise that you're hearing, the focus should be we're fighting for the American people. 
We want that infrastructure bill, the first infrastructure bill. We want that second infrastructure bill. That should be the focus, not all this other stuff. And you have Democrats now fighting against each other, which is really, really dangerous because now you're putting the whole thing in jeopardy and the Republicans aren't even playing a role. So you're doing it all on your own. And I will guarantee you that's something that will come back. That's something that will come back against the Democrats next year during campaign season. They're going to say, look, Democrats couldn't even come together to get these bills passed, even though the Republicans don't even want this bill at all. They're going to still blame the Democrats for it not happening, which in reality, if you did have some support from Republicans, it would get done because you would have enough votes. But now that that that's not the case. So just something to think about and, and, and something to remember. And these bills, both bills are very popular when it comes to the American, the American people. They they like both bills. When you do polls, the polls are overwhelming when it comes to both bills. They're not looking at this $3.5 trillion, how much it costs, or the $1.2 trillion for the first infrastructure bill. They're not looking at the cost. They know we need this. And, and if, it, if it pays for itself, which that's the plan over 10 years, that second infrastructure bill should pay for itself, then what's the problem? We're not just adding to the debt. We're actually going to be paying it off. So... I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see where it goes. We'll have to see what happens on Monday. But uh, that's 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 my two cents. Opposition is opposition, and it works for them. Um, now, for you guys, it's different. What happens Monday? Well, on Monday, we're going to do. It's funny how that that whole that pause. <laughs> what happens Monday? And there's just a long pause. Nobody knows what's going to happen on Monday. So it's, it's going to be very interesting. That's going to be a very busy day. And like I say, like always, subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell notification. I'm going to give you day-by-day, play-by-play. And on Monday, I'll probably have multiple videos going out because there's going to be a lot of stuff happening on that day. Do exactly what the majority leader and speaker ask us to do. So we will get those bills on Monday afternoon. We have not been told exactly what we'll be voting on and how this is going to be resolved. But look, this is what the speaker's job is. She is the speaker of the House. She has steered our country to complicated legislation and difficult moments before. And I have every confidence that that is what she is going to do here. And I would just encourage the American people to make their voices heard, to let their representatives know that they want their representatives to deliver on the needs that they have. Child care, the cost of college, climate change, prescription drugs, lowering the age of Medicare. These are incredibly popular policies across party lines. So you're right, Chris, the Republicans we see in Washington may be the party of opposition on these issues, but the Republicans that I represent want these problems solved. And that's ultimately what should carry the day. So... You believe that on Monday, a reconciliation bill will be put on the floor that the Democrats will pass? I believe on Monday we are going to have a clear path forward to continue working on these these bills. I don't know if the final vote will be Monday, Ah. but I think by Monday we will have come together as a Democratic caucus to figure out how we're going to move forward, hopefully in partnership with the Senate. And the president has been working nonstop to do exactly that, meeting with House members, meeting with senators, and trying to deliver his agenda. Okay, so that was Representative Porter. Now, that was very interesting at the end because she did say bills. She said the two bills will be before them so they can uh, address those bills. And then she backtracked a little bit and said, well, we're, we're going to have an understanding on that second bill, that, that uh, reconciliation bill, because the reality is we're probably not going to see that second infrastructure bill on Monday. They'll probably, it, hopefully they'll have the framework, they'll have the language, but the, the reality of them voting and, and, and approving that in the Senate on Monday is highly unlikely at this point because we, we don't have any information. We're already on Friday and there's not much out there when it comes to this, this second infrastructure bill. So we're going to have to follow this. Like I say, always, you have to follow it and see where it goes. So that's all I have for you guys today. But this is going to be a really interesting weekend. I don't know if they're going to work over the weekend. I would think they should be working over the weekend to try to get something, something for us by Monday when it comes to the second infrastructure bill. Unfortunately, we're not hearing about a lot of the things that people have been talking about. And I, I've always said when it comes to a forced stimulus check, it's highly unlikely that we'll see one. We're still not hearing anything. And we're, we're listening to the, the Progressive Caucus. We're listening to the vice chair. She made no mention of the forced stimulus check. We've also heard from the chair, Ms. Jayapal. She made no mention of a forced stimulus check. So at the current time, 
it's highly unlikely that we'll see a forced stimulus check. I don't like bringing that bad news to you, uh, but that's the reality. And I know that there's still people out there that are saying a forced stimulus check is coming. It's coming on Monday, all this stuff. We, we have not received any information to lead us uh, to believe that that's true. So we're just gonna have to see if that goes anywhere. But if you guys have any comments, post them down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.